The future of cars seems to be electric, but of course the only thing we're worried about is, what does this mean for road trips? Can a Tesla stray outside of its intended area of use and best even the most ill-suited gas car on a road trip? With the help of advanced auto parts, by the end of our 7,000 mile journey across the US and back, we hope to have an answer. Drafting? Yeah, dude, it's basic science. Okay, whatever you say. Just don't hit the brakes too hard. You know, I was expecting South Dakota to be pretty boring, but it's actually pretty beautiful. It really is, with the perfect blend of scenery. It really just keeps going. A lot of grass, huh? Yeah, a lot of grass. Great faces, great places. Our EV versus Evo road trip has taken us on an endless march west, presently through South Dakota. South Dakota, not a lot of gas stations, but a ton of tourist attractions Dude, yeah. and reality TV tie-ins. It's filled with billboards, because I feel like, I mean, what else is there to do? Cows over there? Yes. Tree. Want a tree even? Some water. Oh, you already saw the water, yeah. Lot of grass. Hey Ben, you wanna lick my bumper? South Dakota's unpredictable weather briefly had us taking shelter beneath an overpass, but neither rain, nor hail, nor South Dakota's roadside attractions could distract us. We had our eyes set on the Dakota's most famous landmark. Wow, Ben, there it is, Mount Rushmore. It, uh, it kind of looks a little bit smaller in person. <laughs> yeah, a lot of women have told me that as well. So yeah, Ben, Mount Rushmore. Uh, one of the uh, most famous tourist traps in history uh, began construction in uh, 1927. But yeah, I mean, I'm kind of a Mount, Mount Rushmore expert, so if you have any questions, just ask me. Okay, right on. Which, uh, which four presidents is your favorite? Uh, of the four on Mount Rushmore, I'd have to say my favorite is JFK. I just think that he was so, uh, you know, so historically significant, and obviously his tragedy impacted uh, impacted the nation. So um, I'd have to get yeah, JFK. Right on. I'd, uh, I'd probably go for George Washington, you know, kicking everything off. Yeah, G-Dub, he's a, he's a big one. He's a player as well. I'm actually really surprised about all the wildlife that's up here, too. Yeah, a little deer and everything. Now, why'd you have to go and rev it? <laughs> a loud car. It, wasn't... it wasn't intentional. In the Evo, minutes from our campsite, I was hit with, surprisingly, the first pullover of the trip. Uh, we have a YouTube series called Gears and Gasoline, okay. and we do a road trip series like annually. We started in Virginia, and we were actually going to a campground that I think is over there. Yeah, there's um, one right here. Yeah. It's full though. I don't know if you got a spot. It's but, full? Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I'm sure they're figuring that out now. I, I would assume it is for the holiday weekend. But... Oh, it's Memorial Day, right? All right, man, sounds good. Have a safe trip. All right, we'll so, do. Yeah, just watch the speed. So that's one pullover. Not too bad. And it wasn't even for the car. Not too bad.
Though he'd had me dead to rights on a daring crime, 30 and a 20, the officer didn't give me a ticket, and I followed Ben to a different, empty campsite where we set up for the night. Ugh. Ugh. Hey Ben, are you gonna set your tents up? No need. My tent's right here. What, your car? That's right, my climate control bubble. Something just flew into, okay, it's fine. So let me get this straight. It is Memorial Day weekend, one of the most rugged American holidays I can think of, and you're sleeping inside of your Tesla. Yes, my American-made car. It's got the, a feature on it. You can leave climate control on all night, so it'll be a perfect 70 degrees all night. I've got this nice cushion folded out, some sheets, nothing better. Ben, are you familiar with the word pansy? <laughs> Ben, are you familiar with the word comfort? <laughs> Given that Ben had decided to drive a gutted track car some 7,000 miles, I should have already known the answer to that question. The next day, having seen our fill of presidential landmarks for this trip, we continued our journey westward, across Wyoming, and toward Montana. station back in South Dakota that had EA5 and I have some jugs so I filled up on EA5 and now I'll get you know 11 or 12 gallons of their 91 and then throw in some EA5 to just kind of bring up the ethanol content uh, which I can view on the flex fuel sensor. Montana. I feel like they've got a lot going for it. You got the uh, flatlands on the east side and then a bunch of mountains on the west side. It seems like a great state. Yeah, I mean, it is a very noteworthy state. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some of these uh, supercars driving around, you know, even in Virginia where we're from, they have Montana plates. Fun fact, it's not because they're from Montana. Yeah, it's because they don't have to pay uh, taxes on it, right? Correct. Montana has no sales tax. So where, you know, you might pay like literally $100,000 to register a supercar in one state, you'll pay $200 to register in here. Sounds like uh, Montana should be flush with supercars. Another fun fact. Until as late as 1999, Montana did not have highway speed limits. <laughs> Dang it, what were we doing in 1998? Uh, great question. Uh, actually, it's because too many people started dying. That's uh, that seems like a good reason to enforce the speed limit. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, that's not the real reason. I'm, I'm making that up. Uh, but the real reason is much more boring. So we can go with too many people are dying. Crossing through the western half of Montana, we found ourselves in an outdoorsman's heaven a vast, rugged landscape completely unlike anywhere we'd been before.
So I started doing some stretching and some yoga to try and alleviate some of the pain that I'm feeling when I have to drive that car for long periods of time. And I think, I think we're making some forward progress. Most of the, the sharp pains are gone and it's reduced to more of like a, a dull ache, a dull throbbing ache. So that's progress. By the time I had finished stretching, Thorne's Tesla was charged and it was time to see what lay beyond Montana. So when the Evo is parked and you are ready to go, this is the procedure to get on the road. Uh, it does have a key fob that used to have remote locks on it. Unfortunately, they have all been removed in order to save weight. So you'll have to pop the key out of the fob and unlock it manually. So now that we are in, you wanna make sure that you get all your harnesses out of the way so that you don't wind up sitting on them and then they're real hard to get at once you're sitting down. So get these up out of the way, there you go. And then we've got these pillows right here these nice pillows that we've turned into our butt pillows that you're going to set down right in there to cushion your butt so that it doesn't start to hurt real bad after driving on these hard, uh, unforgiving bucket seats. Now you're ready to nestle yourself down in there. Make sure you're not bigger than like a 34 waist or else you're going to have a real tough time. Now you can start getting your harnesses on. This is a six point harness, which means it has two straps going between your legs, which is gonna make it a lot easier on your privates. I'm gonna get these all clicked in here, then tighten them up. There you go, nice and snug so you're not going anywhere. And now we can put this wheel on, quick disconnect sparkle wheel, get that lined up. Not going anywhere. Want to make sure you put your gloves on because you don't want to handle a suede wheel like this. Get your handle wheels all over it, you'll ruin it real quick. So put your gloves on. Now you need to make sure that you have this, this switch right here, the kill switch, switch to the on position so that the battery has power. Then you're going to take the key out of the fob again and put that into the ignition itself and then put the fob on the end of the key that serves these, as the immobilizer. Now we're started, but we can't leave yet because the SST transmission is in normal mode now and it needs to be put into super sport mode before you can go anywhere because that puts maximum torque on the clutches and makes the transmission last longer. So press up once to put it into sport and then hold up for three seconds to put it into super sport mode. Now you're ready to drive. You're almost ready to drive. So you just saw the process for how Ben starts the Evo. Let me show you the process with the Tesla. As you walk up to it, the door handles present themselves like so. And uh, you press on the brake pedal to start the car and then drive it off. As we crossed briefly through the northern tip of Idaho, we entered the Pacific time zone. We were now on the west coast. Uh, we've just left Idaho and uh, we're headed deep into the Pacific Northwest uh, in Washington. And uh, Ben wanted to go off and get some E85. So, you know, I said, screw it, I'm gonna keep going. And uh, you can just catch up with me later. Uh, I'm not gonna let him fueling up tie me down. Now you want E85 in Virginia, no problem. We got 30 plus stations in the state. Here on the West Coast is a little bit different. Idaho only has about three stations statewide and Washington doesn't do much better. They've got about eight. So as we cross over into Washington, I'm gonna go a little bit out of the way and fill up my jugs so that I can make sure I keep a good ethanol mix in my fuel. I don't know, a bunch of gasoline car problems. I don't, I don't really have any issues with that with the Tesla, obviously. Um, I just sit there, plug in with the thing, it charges at a rate of 400 miles per hour, and before you know it, I'm good to go. Weather put a damper on things for me initially, but soon things cleared up, and we were introduced to the eclectic beauty of Washington State. I just 
to do the rest of the E85 that I had in that jug into the tank on this last fill up. And next time I fill up, it should be pure E85 or E75 or E60 or something. But it's going to be E next time. My path to Sunnyside and the location of the E85 filling station I needed took me south of Thorns Root, and what a path it was. My route to the E85 filling station is taking me west along Route 24 to Washington. And let me tell you, this is the kind of seclusion that I've been looking for. You see a car every once in a while, the roads are crazy straight. There's just gorgeous views everywhere. This is the place to be at sunset. The last time I built something like this was probably British Columbia back in our Florida and Alaska trip. I missed this. An hour north, the views from the Tesla were just as breathtaking. Benjamin, do you remember how I was making fun of you all along this trip because you had to stop at specifically uh, positioned charging stations to yep. to charge and refuel your vehicle so that you could continue to travel? Yeah. Uh, well, don't I pie on my face? Uh, <laughs> I am in a far worse position than that uh, because there are eight places that I can get E85 in this state, and I just visited one of them and it's actually ethanol free. Uh, so kind of the opposite of E85. If that's the only gas station there, you, that sucks. But honestly, I'd try to go to another one that has at least E10. Okay, well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go now and I'm gonna drive very gently to, to uh, the campsite. Um, okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll just sit here and get a full 100% charge and- <laughs> Are you, are you guys, are you not at the campsite? No, I'm just sitting at the supercharger. I figured I'd meet you in town and we can go up to this campsite together. Okay, well, I'm I'm still like over an hour out, so uh, you, you guys might want to just go set up. I'll see it. I'll see you when I see you. I'll, I don't have anything else to film, so. <laughs> uh, you could film something self-deprecating. <laughs> oh, I'm. Th that's what's happening right now. That's why you're on okay. speakerphone filling up on the pitifully low blend of premium gas the station did offer, I made my way to our campsite, being extra gentle on the throttle to prevent knock. It's 10.30. Uh, ben is nowhere to be seen. We have uh, very silently rolled into this little campsite. Um, there doesn't seem to be anybody else here, so it's a little bit <laughs> sketchy. It's obviously very dark as well. There's no lights here. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and get my campsite set up and... I hope everything's okay with Ben. Things were great. This, which is a fold out like foam mattress basically, um, and it's uh, it's to the exact shape of everything in here, so that way it lays out perfectly flat. These are the sheets with the climate control at a perfect 70 degrees in here. It's just a comfort to have, really. I could sleep naked in this thing and I'd be fine. Camping doesn't get better than this. That thing is obnoxious. Ugh. Ben, do you realize what time it is? Yeah, it's it's very late. I'm very tired. I'd like to camp. <laughs> what took you so long? I was trying to get a 85. <laughs> did I get a 85? No, I did not. <laughs> Goodness. Well, at least it's quiet now. Uh... Yeah, I'm sorry. It doesn't have an EV mode. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my. <laughs> my ears my ears are actually ringing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a nice creek here for you to enjoy. Then I have tinnitus now. <laughs> this trip gave me tinnitus. All right. Well, I'm going back to bed. So, uh <laughs>
Good luck setting up your tent. <laughs> Naomi had the distinct impression that the Tesla had started to go to Ben's head, and he may have forgotten that the car he was driving on this road trip was actually, despite what it may seem, a terrible car for road trips. I needed to remind him. So let's do a race. Uh, we are going to race from here in Ellensburg, Washington, all the way down to the coast of Oregon. But there's a twist. Instead of me racing Ben head on, I'm going to do an oil change first because this is a gas car and it has to do an oil change. So he's going to hit the road and I have to figure out how to do an oil change on an Evo that has a giant splitter that I've never worked on before, before I get to get on the road. How's that sound, Ben? That's pretty good. Let's do it. The route that Ben had planned for this race began by heading north, then west towards Seattle, and finally south down the coast to Oregon. It spans some six hours and hundreds of miles, because otherwise, Ben would have no hope of catching my Tesla. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. All right, we have started. I have just left the advanced auto parts and uh, we're taking a northern loop through some mountains first. It looks like it's a three hour stint to the next charge station. I am at currently 87%, so that should be enough to get me there. I think that oil change is going to take Ben a long time. Uh, not only is it a car he's not familiar with, uh, the 4B11 motor, which is not the same engine that he has in his Evo, so um, that might add a little bit more time to that. And the car also has a front splitter on it means he's gonna have to take all that stuff off to be able to get to the uh, oil filter. So I think I've got a good chance of that holding him up and uh, we should get to Oregon before him. Um, I'm feeling pretty confident about that, feeling pretty confident. I might even stop for a lemonade, sit there at the beach while I wait for him. Ben was wrong. The oil change began smoothly as I jacked up the car with the meticulous efficiency you would come to expect from a mechanical genius like myself. In fact, you could even say that it was smooth sailing. Right up until I got to the part where I had to remove the splitter. Ugh. I removed bolt after bolt, but the splitter still hung on loosely. My prefrontal cortex, battered by eight days of tremor-inducing vibrations, couldn't figure this out, and like a preschooler failing to fit a circular peg into a square hole, I finally decided to give up and make a mess instead. The view was much better from the Tesla. It looks like there's some sort of ski resort up here. It's so cool to see all of these like snow-capped mountains. They're not even snow-capped, they're completely covered in snow. Absolutely amazing. I'm passing like a small waterfall coming off the side of this mountain here. That's just absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna reposition. <laughs> Washington's an incredible state. The Pacific Northwest is an incredible area of the United States. And if you haven't been there, you should come here because, wow, it's gorgeous. The environmental crisis I had brewing in the parking lot of the Advance Auto was less gorgeous. It's advantages to doing an oil change right outside of an Advance. If you need more supplies, they have them. Exxon Valdez out here, good lord. Unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, come on, are you me right now? The rest of my audio from this oil change was lost. Sometime later, with the fresh hell of changing the oil filter behind me, I was finally filling the engine with fresh oil and buttoning up the bumper and splitter. After profusely apologizing to the manager on duty, I was finally done with my oil change. So that took an hour and 15 minutes, probably the longest oil change in my life. Uh, very unimpressive, and Ben has a massive head start. I don't think we can run him down, but we're gonna try. Can't find my gloves, so I'm just wiping my hands down with a wet wipe. Uh, yeah, let's get to it. Oh, we should probably pull up directions. Yeah. Thanks to my disgraceful performance, Ben had a nearly 100 mile lead on me, insurmountable under normal circumstances. My only hope was that his charging would take long enough to let me catch up. That, and a bit of subterfuge. So Thorn has just texted me saying that uh, we need to both pause our progress so that he can send the drone up to get footage. I really appreciate him trying to uh, do so, and uh, I agreed beforehand that we would pause 
if either one of us needed to film to keep things fair. However, I will not be stopping. This is not a cannonball race. This is purely an efficiency race, not which car is faster. We've already proven that at the track. If I were to try to do a cannonball with this Tesla, it'd probably overheat and I'd not get anywhere. Uh, so we are obeying all traffic laws. We are not speeding. Hey, hi. Hey, so, I apologize. This window doesn't go down any further than that. Oh, can does I, it? Okay. We could open uh, the can door. Can I open the door? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, maybe five over. So we've made it about five miles, and I've been pulled over for speeding, going 10 to 13 over. This is purely an efficiency test, not a who can drive faster without getting caught test. Things are off to a great start. We're, we're really on our way. Uh, so I guess we really did wind up pulling over for Thorn after all. All right, we've just plugged in. What's our speed? What's our speed? Oh, that's not good. Come on, get faster, faster, faster. 200. 300. Get to that four. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. I think this is an all-time high. I think this is legit the fastest I've ever seen this thing charge. So it is currently charging at 440 miles per hour is very fast and now I get to enjoy a little bit here at uh, this rest stop and uh, I'll go in maybe get a coffee maybe use the bathroom just take my time there's another Tesla over there maybe I'll talk with them I don't know So I was issued a citation, uh, 13 miles an hour over the speed limit, 100% deserved it. So we are going to dial things back just a bit, uh, and we're still going to beat Thorn. Uh, we're just going to cheat more. Driving down Highway 97 through Washington, just surrounded by gorgeous forests and massive mountains. I wish, I wish that you could see it too, but uh, we're not stopping to film. Uh, we don't have time. We have to just get done with this so that we can beat Ben. Man, that charger was so fast. I literally only had time to get my food. I don't even have enough time to eat my food. Oh my gosh, we're stopped. We don't have time for this. I'm surprised you're calling me from such a loud, crass vehicle. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Good, just, you know, comfy riding along. How are you? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, all the things you said, comfy. Uh, riding along. Um, yeah, just, just yeah, checking to make sure everything's going okay. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, I, I, I orchestrated probably the fastest oil change in history. Uh, I'm only got 30 minutes. Well, left about 30 minutes after you, so. Wow, that's actually really good, yeah. Yeah, no pressure. Oh, oh sure. the first, You the made first, me, you know, son of a. <laughs> you made me miss my turn. I got distracted. Crap. <laughs> oh, no. What a disaster. Well, hey, I don't want to keep you anymore. I don't want to keep distracting you. So, tell you what, Thor, I am actually going to make one extra stop in addition to my oil change. I'm going to stop and get more E85 because there's, uh, there's an E85 station a little bit out of the way, but I'm going to make it work, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's that's not gonna take longer than me charging the Tesla for sure. Just uh, just to try and give you a little more gap, you know, just a little more buffer room. <laughs> I'll be waiting oceanside holding a lemonade for you. Ben could talk all he wanted, but his mind games couldn't change the fact that I was definitely still ahead of him. And with him stopping for E85, he'd sealed his own fate. In fact, my detour to get ethanol was less of a detour and more of a shortcut. We got some good E70, two jugs of it, and a full tank in here. As my ethanol percentage just steadily rises, ooh yeah. Goodbye knock, hello horsepower. Meanwhile, just outside Seattle, things in the Tesla had taken a turn for the worse. Yeah, just, uh, just wanted to see how things are going. Still going good? Yep, just flying along over here. 
I thought it sounded like you were just at a dead stop. No, I'm, I'm definitely not at a dead stop. I was at a dead stop. I've been sitting here in traffic for probably half an hour. Not good. With my final stop before the finish out of the way, the Evo was back in the hunt. It's actually better for my range uh, because I'm going at a slower speed. Slower speed means my range gets to be increased because I don't have the uh, increased wind drag and the electric vehicles don't idle. So I'm not losing any energy uh, by sitting here. Hopefully Ben hits the same traffic when he gets here and it holds him up just as much. That's the only thing we can hope. Is at 73 percent which means we're supposed to get to seaside oregon with 10 percent left uh going up this route uh it's just risky because uh if you run out of battery you're screwed and you've got to get towed and that's no fun but i'm gonna leave it with 11 percent charge i'm gonna unplug welcome to oregon Less than 30 minutes away from Seaside, and I think it's close. I just hope Ben hasn't made it there yet. It's pretty late. 9.20, I'm just crossing the bridge over the bay. Uh, I have a feeling Ben beat me. I don't know. This is a lot later than we planned to get here. We wanted to get here right at sunset, but sunset was like 20 minutes ago. The moment of truth. Have we managed to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat? Or am I going to pay $170 speeding ticket for absolutely no reason? I'm gonna show up in 10 minutes now. We're so close. But I don't have the confidence that I had when I left. I was pretty sure I was gonna beat him, but... Uh, I feel like I'm the, the late one to the party. I think I missed it. I think Ben beat me. I think we I think we got it. I think all of our cheating paid off. I hope I won. I hope I won. Oh my gosh. to pee so bad. Is that him? Is that him? Feet. Dang it! No! He beat me! Dang it! Ah! Ah! No! No! Welcome, my friend. Ah! <laughs> Dang it, Seattle! <laughs> Ah, oh, man, I was so sure I had you. Oh man. Dang it. And then I had that freaking traffic in Seattle and I'm like, no, he's gonna, he's, he's taking a different route. He's, this isn't, he's not gonna hit this traffic. Ah, oh, man, I thought I had you. Good this view, is though. gorgeous. Yeah, good view, very good pick. Man, we did it, we made it to the shore. How long have you been here? Uh, not long. Okay, 15, that's 15, 20 minutes. Okay, yeah. that, wow. Yeah. Considering this was like an all day thing, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, now, oh, man. now Ben, what I do have to tell you is that I did beat you through some light cheating. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I didn't actually stop for anything. <laughs> Are you serious? I would have beaten you by 35 minutes? Mm, roughly. You told me you stopped for 50 <laughs> minutes total for filming. I did tell you that, yeah. All right, well, then the Tesla's the winner. The Tesla's the winner. Holy oh, smokes, you oh, must have had a lot of traffic in Seattle too. Uh, no, I did not hit Seattle at you all. You didn't have any traffic? I also cheated on that. Uh, I went south to get E85 instead of the... <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. Evo owners are cheaters. <laughs> it's definitive. <laughs> Never trust a guy with a gasoline car. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? You got a ticket? <laughs> uh, well, 
I hope you've learned your lesson. Uh, <sighs> cheaters get tickets. Yeah, but they do win. Uh, uh, did you though? <laughs> I, I did beat did you, you pretty win? bad. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy that. Yeah. And so the day and the second leg of our trip ended in an incontestable victory for the Tesla. Even better, we'd finally laid eyes on the splendor of the Pacific Ocean. Tune in next week for the stunning and extremely eventful conclusion to our trip. See you then. Guys, I've been making a lot of jokes about doing yoga and all this other stuff, pulling pillows and whatnot to try and make myself more comfortable. I'm extremely uncomfortable. It's been over a week of this, and my body is not happy. It was fun for a week. It is no longer fun. <laughs>